Hello, all of your beautiful people and all that jazz. I'm still freaking awesome. It's the same day, same clothes, same everything. Okay. So Johan and I just stopped making the first video on testosterone. I popped in, we, we went and we grabbed some coffee, and I quickly checked my messages. And of course, there would be a lady that was just telling me exactly what I was telling you guys in the first video, okay? Her comment to me was exactly like this. Yesterday, she went to the doctor, and the doctor's solution for her little problem is what? The birth control pill and friggin' Prozac, okay? That's another thing that pisses me off. The doctors just want to... Because here is a man that can tell you all kinds of stuff about depression, and I know there's a video that we have to make about depression, and we will do that as well. But, I can't, I don't even know how to ha handle this one. Abby will take over in a minute. The, the, the blast first, okay? So, here's the thing. When your hormones are screwed up, you feel like shit, okay? So many people walk around in life feeling like shit, thinking it's the norm. That's the way they're supposed to feel. They don't even know what it's like to feel good, like when they were in their 20s, right? So here's this lady. Her hormones are screwed up. She's 44. She's uh, pre-menopausal or post -menopausal, some other menopausal thing, okay? So it's pretty obvious that her hormones are screwed up. So what's the doctor's solution? Ah, oh, we'll just put her on an antidepressant and give her some cancer in the same process. Okay, we'll put her on the pill, give her cancer, and then we'll put her on Prozac. She'll feel nothing about getting cancer, okay? How can that be a solution? How can anybody allow a freaking doctor to do that to your body? Okay? That is just beyond me. Like, you you guys should start really questioning doctors. Doctors is not the almighty God, okay? So let's discuss estrogen in this freaking video for once, okay? So, so let's, like I said to Johan just before we start the video, we, we'll call the video estrogen the root of all evil. And then he says, remember to say access, because you're now yes. Excess. Excess. So, what are we going to tell them about friggin' estrogen? The problem is not normal levels, but excess estrogen. Mm -hmm. And that comes from all the stuff in the environment nowadays around us. And excess body fat and uh, alcohol consumption, especially beer and soy products and all that stuff. Tell them what you told me about the bloody soy products, okay? Soy products and corn products, you know, is so in excess right now. Like, it is, it is something that grows very easily. It's something that they can shove in foods to um, uh, densify or, or, or make it more, or what's the word I'm looking for? Like, they just shove it, it's, it's soy products in everything, right? So, uh, the reason for that is soy is so easily uh, uh, planted, so easily... Uh, it's a cheap source of oils and protein. Okay. Protein. protein. Okay. <laughs> but it's not proper protein. Okay. So, estrogen. What's the... F okay. So, excess estrogen. So, what happens... An, an excess estrogen is the thing that's causing all the cancers. Okay. That everybody is... Like, that, like we were talking about with the guys. Really? My daughter... <laughs> <laughs> my daughter keeps popping up and she wants to ask questions and we're busy with the making of video. She's irritated. Look up. Look at the worry in my eye. Okay. So, just for interest's sake, there was a case in, uh, y you can Google it, of a man a couple years ago who drank lots and lots of soy milk every day. And uh, he grew boobs. <laughs> and his libido fell through the floor and all that stuff. But literally he was growing boobs from the, all that soy milk. Mm -hmm. so. We're going to piss a bunch of people off because I commented on somebody else's uh, soy video, a doctor, a professional doctor that was actually uh, talking against soy and this vegetarian dude, I mean I went and I made a comment. And vegan or vegetarian? Ve vegan most probably. Veganism is a religion. Yes. Yeah, you know, we, I mean, we're going to piss so many people off, we should stop talking about religion too. <laughs> that would be fun. Right, but I mean it's a religion, it's not... Yeah sustainable. It's just something people believe very strongly in. I mean, vegans cannot be healthy because mm. you need vitamin B12, for example, and you cannot get that from any vegetable source. Okay. Aggression. Okay, there's another thing. Okay, when whenever people start talking about, um, do they... S do people always associate aggression and testosterone, high testosterone levels. However, mm -hmm. have you ever noticed how often big guys are like gentle giants, and it's these small guys, these uh, androgynous types that are really aggro and stuff. Uh, low testosterone is a great cause of aggression too. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and in certain animal species... Yeah, you just read the study, so we can maybe put yeah, the link for them if you want to read it. In certain animal species, mm -hmm. it's estrogen levels in the brain that modulate aggression, not testosterone. So, mm -hmm. so, uh, so the pill, going on the pill again with the estrogen, um, you, you, you girls that are on the birth control pill, um, like there's a certain point in your life where you basically have the choice between condoms and birth control, okay? You literally don't really have any other choice if you don't want to get pregnant. So you're going to be on it for a while, but you guys need to get rid of those pills the moment you can. The moment you're done having children, you should do do something else, okay? Because um, the... What the hell was I going to say about the estrogen? You know, I got sidetracked because I was listening to you. Okay, so... Um, do you guys know, or have you guys noticed that, Johan was asking me, like, what do you feel like when you're on the pill? For me, um, I felt unstable the whole time. I mean, I was emotionally up and down like crazy, and there are times where your estrogen levels go higher uh, within the, 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 the month that you're on the pill, that you are more aggressive. You're irritable, your husband irritates you, the fact that he only that he breathes next to you irritates you, and that has nothing to do with testosterone, because there's no testosterone in those pills. Now, if they actually gave you a combination of estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone in a pill, okay, that would actually stabilize your hormones. You wouldn't be going through this emotional thing. You wouldn't be getting PMS. I mean, I was just the other day, um, Katie was asking me to do a video on, on um, uh, uh, PMS, right? I have no idea how to do a video on PMS because the, the, the stage in your life where you're in, whenever you are at PMS, most girls are on the pill, okay? <laughs> now, my daughter's not on the pill and she's getting the PMS. I have no idea how to deal with that one. But the thing is, what, you, what we're trying to convey over is a lot of people say, oh, okay, but you shouldn't be getting testosterone because it's going to make you all aggressive, okay? I've been aggressive my whole life, okay? The fact that I'm on a very, very low level testosterone does not make me more aggressive than I already am. It's like the same thing, here's the, here's the thing, um, if a man or a woman, if a person, okay, is an aggressive person by nature, okay, if you're an asshole, it's the same as when you're taking alcohol, if you're an asshole when you're normal, okay, when you drink alcohol and you get drunk, you're going to be an even worse asshole. So if you are an asshole in real life and you get a little bit of testosterone, yeah, then sure, you are going to be a bigger asshole than when you're not on the testosterone, right? But there's no such thing as testosterone makes you aggressive. My personality, in fact, has calmed down. You have no idea, okay? I'm not walking around with a baseball bat on a daily basis like I did before I was on the hormone replacement therapy. So that is one thing, one myth that you guys can just throw out the door, okay? Estrogen. When, like Johan was saying about the estrogen, when you're on the pill and you go into, your levels are not normal on the pill the whole time, okay? They're only pumping you with estrogen. They're not doing the, the, the testosterone. Some of them have the progesterone in them, I think. But, but okay, so here's the problem. That's not actual real estrogen. Like because mice. Mice. bioidentical, what do you want to call it, estradiol is not orally active. They can't put it in a pill. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Same for true. testosterone. You can't okay. put it in a pill. Yeah. There are modified forms that work, like methylated just methyl testosterone, you can take in a pill and but it's not, not, not testosterone. That makes you aggressive as hell. Yeah. But it doesn't have the other benefits. Yeah. So why on earth, you know, all these people are so... Uh, uh, very, um, so aware of, you know, oh, we have to have not the, the you know, genetically modified this in our bodies and this and that, but, but that yet they're okay with putting chemicals in their, in their bodies because that is exactly what you're putting in your, your when you're taking the birth control pill. It's a freaking chemical, people, that you are putting in your body. It's not a natural product. Everybody does natural stuff in your food, natural stuff on your skin, and yet they go and pump their bodies full of freaking chemicals when they, when they do the the, the, the birth control pill. And those are steroid pills. What's the symptoms exactly. of estrogen? You all know the symptoms Excess. of estrogen. Excess estrogen. Okay. You feel like crap all the time. <clears throat> You're moody all the time. Everybody around you irritates you all the time. You're bloated. You're bloated. Okay. You're, um, I actually had a list of the things that I put on there of, of when I was on the birth control pill, all the stuff that happened to me. Water retention. Weight gain. Um, oh, yeah. And the fact that it just goes to certain places. Yeah, yeah, for females. So if you're on the pill, like you, if somebody's on a birth control pill and they come to me and they want to lose weight, you can put a person on, on a birth control pill on, the, on a diet and you can train the shit out of them, okay? And they almost probably lean out. 
but the specific targeted areas where the estrogen plays the fat, like on your belly, on your ass, on your um, triceps, that fat ain't going to go anywhere until you get the hell off the pill. The legs especially. The legs. Have a really hard time with yeah, when you're on the pill, you're not going to go stand on stage and have lean legs, okay? <laughs> not ever, because the fat just clings. And those hormones that you pump into your body is what's that, 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 that uh, estrogen that you're pumping in your body. That's what's causing the fat to just cling there, and you can do nothing. It's not going to go anywhere, okay? So the girls that go on stage that's not on the pill do much better than the girls who don't, because they get lean. They get lean right up to their legs and their butts and they, their bellies and everything. So you, now, first of all, you take... A, a, a lady that is going into menopause and you put her on the pill, she blimps out like the friggin' Michelin man. She could have been lean her whole life or thin or skinny or whatever, okay? Then all of a sudden she goes on the, the, the moron doctor puts her on the pill and she gets that old lady pouch and she doesn't know why because she's eating healthy, she's training, she's trying all of these, but she looks pregnant all the time because she's got this damn pouch, okay? Which is caused by this friggin' estrogen chemical crap that you put in your bodies. <sighs> it's not a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? What can we say? What can we tell about estrogen? It's the root of all evil. Well, it's kind of interesting that recent research has shown that estrogen receptor blockers, mm. such as tamoxifen, can actually be useful for certain psychiatric conditions. Like? Uh, depression? Certain forms of depression and stuff, but mm. it just... And females are way more prone to depression. Once mm -hmm. again, sort of hinting at a connection between estrogen and depression and that sort of stuff. So, what can we do about controlling it? That's the question. How do we make sure we don't get to the point where we're estrogen dominant? Mm -hmm. What do we do? Oh, we have to talk about the foods. Well, I guess that brings us to the foods. <laughs> okay, so we were talking this morning about uh, anti-estrogenic foods, right. which don't really get consumed as much. And we had a list of what was all of, on there. Get your papers and pens, girls. We're going to be writing some stuff down. Well, the first and foremost would be your cruciferous type vegetables, such as broccoli, mm -hmm. and, uh, but, flour, mm -hmm. but you have to eat about a pound of broccoli a day, <laughs> well, for a man. So you have yes. to eat not three pieces of broccoli, you have to eat it. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I was thinking, well, before we go on with the list, is I said to you, Han, okay, well, I got all these wonderful powders that I've been putting into our smoothies, because at some point we're going to have to talk about libido, because I know there's a, a bunch of people and you, Han's going to join me in, in that uh, conversation um, and all of the wonderful things. So I got all these powders. So I was saying to Han, is there availability, like the powders that I got in really concentrated form, one of them is pomegranate juice, wheatgrass juice, but I'll go through the list. I'll actually quickly make a video maybe after this one and just show you guys the, the, the uh, protein or the, the powders that I got for my smoothies. But I was wondering if there is a way to get the same kind of concentrated powder form of broccoli to bring down your estrogen. Like, would you be able to... Get the particular chemical in broccoli in supplement form in the U.S. Yes, and it's called, oh, it's only in the oh, U.S.? Goodness. Well, can I you know get you it get it Canada? here. I don't know about Canada. Uh, okay. You probably can. Uh, mm -hmm. There are two related. One gets converted in the body to the other. One is methane, and the other one is indole 3 carbonyl or whatever. <laughs> okay. We'll, we'll use the idiot box right here there, and we'll spell the two words for you. How's about that? Okay. Okay, so the rest of the food. What those do okay. is they help the liver pro process estrogen to okay. get rid of it, to get it out of your system. Uh-huh. Uh, some other good anti-estrogenic things. Mangosteen is very good. Got the powder of that. Uh, ginger, I think, has some good properties there as well, mm -hmm. but you have to eat about 8 grams of ginger a day. Mm -hmm. But the health benefits of doing that or getting ginger in on a daily basis is another video that we'll make and I'll um, maybe... It, it acts a lot like your estrogen blockers. Okay. And, uh, well, people are not going to like this one. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Onion. Oh, yes. Onions and allergies. But lots of onions. <laughs> yeah. So not only are you going to fart a lot from your chia seeds, they're going to have a good smell to them when you or have you onions. Or you can just drink three tablespoons of onion juice a day. <laughs> okay, so that's another video we have to make about allergies and lactose. We have a lot of people that uh, talk to us about uh, lactose intolerance and stuff like that, uh, which is another subject that we need to discuss because 90% of the people that think they're lactose intolerant is not. Okay, but we'll get to that. Okay, so, the, okay, so the, it was onions and then um, ginger... Broccoli, or can occur yeah, sort of those fruits. Yeah. Cabbage type stuff. Okay, and the cabbage type stuff, people, is also the stuff that doesn't make you fat. Okay. You'll see on my list um, of macronutrients that you can eat. I always tell people if they ask me like, what types of vegetables should I eat? I always say everything that makes you fart. Okay. If it makes you fart, you can eat it. The potato ain't gonna make you fart. The potato ain't a vegetable. You're never gonna eat it. But all the green vegetables, like all the cabbages, all the um, Everything in that family, those are the, the, the vegetables that's healthy for you, that has that gives you all the benefits when you're doing fat loss, okay? Not potatoes and corn and peas and carrots, okay? <laughs> Not those. Yeah, and spinach and all those things are very good too, those greens. Yeah. Even kale. <laughs> Even kale. Well, that's one of the cabbage type yeah, veggies. things are. 